In China, robots are doing backflips, playing drums, and performing kung fu for cheering crowds. They are agile, dynamic, and expressive. But in the West, robots are folding laundry. They are making coffee. They are moving boxes. They are slow, precise, and utilitarian. Is this just a coincidence? Or does it reveal a fundamental split in how two civilizations view technology? Why does the East build performers while the West builds servants? Is it just a cultural preference? Or is it a sign of completely different engineering philosophies? The answer involves supply chains, AI training models, and the future of the global economy. Subscribe to master the world's fastest moving tech market before your competitors do. To understand the behavior, we must first look at the anatomy. A robot's personality is defined by its muscles, the actuators. China has chosen the path of electric agility. Robots, like the Unitree, Unitree, H1, are built with self-developed high-torque density motors, up to 220 newton meters per kilogram. They primarily use harmonic drives. These are compact, lightweight, and relatively affordable thanks to China's massive industrial supply chain. This allows the robot to move with explosive speed, running at 3.3 meters per second. It's the same philosophy as the Chinese EV industry. Rapid iteration, cost reduction, and performance that looks good on a spec sheet. The West, led by Tesla, has taken a much harder road. They are shifting toward planetary roller screws. Why? Because while harmonic drives are good for speed, they lack the durability for heavy, repetitive lifting and the precision for fine manipulation. Planetary roller screws are incredibly difficult to manufacture. They require Swiss watch levels of precision, but they offer immense force and stiffness. This is why Optimus moves stiffly, but can hold heavy weights without shaking. China's approach has a massive advantage. Cost. By leveraging the EV supply chain, batteries, motors, sensors, Chinese companies have driven the cost of a humanoid robot down to about $14,000. The West is still targeting the $20,000 to $30,000 range. China is building the Honda Civic of robots, cheap, reliable, and everywhere. The West is building the Mercedes S-Class, complex, expensive, and refined. But hardware is only the body. The soul of the machine is the AI training method. And here, the divergence is even more fascinating. How do you teach a robot to do a backflip? You don't program it line by line. China's robotics leaders, like Unitree, rely heavily on reinforcement learning and simulation. They build a digital twin of the robot in a physics simulator and let it try millions of times until it figures out how to balance. This creates robots that are incredibly robust physically. They can recover from a kick, walk on ice, and perform acrobatics. It is athletic intelligence. Tesla and Figure, however, are chasing general purpose intelligence. You cannot learn to fold a shirt or make coffee just by simulation. The physics of cloth and liquids are too complex. So, the West uses teleoperation. Humans wear VR headsets and motion capture suits to possess the robot, performing tasks thousands of times. The AI watches the human, learns the visual inputs, and mimics the action. This is the end-to-end -end neural network approach, similar to FSD version 12. The result? Chinese robots have a better cerebellum. They move better. Western robots have a better frontal cortex. They understand tasks better. These engineering choices are not accidental. They are deeply rooted in culture. The report identifies a cultural gene. In China, influenced by the concept of harmony, a robot is seen as a cultural carrier. A robot performing kung fu isn't just showing off agility. It's embodying a national identity. It resonates with a collective desire for technological pride. 
This is why you see robots in spring festival galas. They are public spectacles. The goal is to create a wow moment to show that technology can coexist with tradition. In the West, influenced by pragmatism, a robot is a tool. It exists to solve a specific problem. I don't want to do laundry, or I need to move this box from A to B. The relationship is transactional. Human as master, robot as servant. This explains the uncanny valley difference. Research shows East Asian users are 42% more satisfied when robots show empathy or perform artistic feats. Western users, they just want it to work efficiently and disappear into the background. These cultural and technical differences create two very different initial markets. In China, the cultural tourism and education market is exploding. Robots are guides in museums, performers in theme parks, and educational tools in universities. It's a B to B to C model. The barrier to entry is lower because the robot doesn't need to be perfect at manual labor. It just needs to be engaging and mobile. In the West, the focus is labor substitution in the dark factory. With high labor costs in the U.S. and Europe. The demand is for robots that can replace human workers in factories, but there is a looming giant: elderly care. Both China and Japan are facing a demographic crisis. A robot that can do kung fu has excellent balance, which means it can also support an elderly person walking. The athletic intelligence China is building today will become the caregiver intelligence of tomorrow. However, whether it's a kung fu master, a factory worker, or a caregiver, they all share one critical bottleneck: energy. Humanoid robots are power hungry. Walking, balancing, and processing AI models consumes massive amounts of electricity. To operate safely indoors among humans, they cannot use flammable liquid batteries. They need safe, high-density power. This is where the robot supply chain. Collides with the EV supply chain. Chinese robot makers are already partnering with EV giants like BYD to use their latest blade batteries and upcoming solid-state tech. To understand the power source that will drive this robotic revolution, you need to understand the cutting edge of battery tech. I've detailed the roadmap of the world's leading battery maker in my BYD Solid-State Battery Report 2025. Safe. Fireproof solid-state batteries are the key to putting robots in our homes. I've made this report available for free download for a limited time. The link is in the description. Grab it to see the future of energy storage. So, who will win the robot wars? In my view, China is winning the body war by treating robots like consumer electronics, iterating fast, lowering costs, and building a massive industrial supply chain. They are creating the hardware platform for the world. The West is winning the brain war by focusing on end-to-end -end AI and complex manipulation. They are solving the software challenge of general-purpose utility. The future winner will be the one who combines them. Imagine a robot with the agility and low cost of a Unitri H1, powered by the brain of a Tesla Optimus. That is the moment the robot revolution. Truly begins, and ironically, the kung fu robot might actually be the better path to getting there. By making robots fun, affordable, and culturally accepted first, China might just put a robot in every home before the West figures out how to fold a fitted sheet perfectly. Now, I want to hear from you. Would you rather buy a robot that can entertain your family? Or one that just does the dishes. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and remember, subscribe to master the world's fastest-moving tech market before your competitors do. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.